Right. Uh, happy, happy Friday. Greetings. It's uh, September 7th, 2012. This is Thomas Keegan again with LibertarianProgressive.com. And uh, we've been conducting interviews with independent third-party candidates. Today we have uh, 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 John J. Uh, Myers for the U.S. Senate in Texas. And uh, it's a pleasure to talk to him today. And uh, I... When we're going through these interviews, we usually just start out with um, asking people what is their motivation for this uh, this year, 2012. Um, it, your motivation might be different than it might have been in other years. I mean, I think this is really going to be a, a spectacular year for independent and third-party candidates. And if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, um, John Jay, it's a pleasure to talk to you today. And, and how are you doing today, sir? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Let's see. Um, what's my motivation? I guess my motivation right now is to spread a message, and, and hopefully that message will take hold. The biggest thing that we're trying to do right now with this campaign is actually get the media to pay attention to us, because we feel like we have one of the strongest libertarian campaigns in the United States. And so we, I mean, we've got a full campaign team. We rented an RV. We toured Texas. We went with Gary Johnson. We've done over 20 specific you know, here is John J. Myers coming to talk to you all over Texas, you know, and uh, events where we've had about 50 people, you know, show up at each event. And I tell you, I've seen some of Paul Sadler, the Democrats' events, and he doesn't have near the people that we have coming out. Unfortunately, he has the D next to his name, which makes the uh, the news media flock over the guy. So, our, our you know, honestly, the big mission is to is to try to break the stranglehold of the media to get them to just wake up and say, look, why don't you just interview the guy? Because that's what happened to Ron Paul in 2008, you know, he went, or 2007, really. He went from, from like, people really didn't know who he was, but then those debates with Rudy Giuliani, when those happened, those catapulted Ron Paul into everybody's lives. Everybody started talking about him. Everybody started Googling him. Everybody started passing this information around. So we only hope if, if we could just get into enough of these debates, in particular one that we have coming up on October 2nd, then we'd be, uh, you know, it would really help to have this be probably one of the strongest libertarian campaigns ever. And yeah. then, uh, and if we could also, you know, we are actually scheduled for debates in late October, but obviously that's late October. <laughs> it's a little late in the game. Yeah, actually, actually, and I just actually signed a petition today that I got from, um, Jill Stein, actually, it's it's it's, it's to um, protest the uh, uh, Corporation for pu pu Public Debates. Um, I think it is, and uh, it was about getting um, at least at the presidential level. But we need to do that at the local level. Uh, also, this is more than just about debates. I mean, here's the issue. You just brought up an excellent issue. Um, to, to how can people make an informed decision if they don't have all their options? And that goes for everything from our foreign. Uh, uh, policies to our um, uh, police state apparatus to uh, to whether we get a voice in the debates. If if John Jay doesn't get on the stage, um, it, it, we're not saying you, you, you know he, he's guaranteed to get your votes. We're just saying to to hear his At least voice. Hear what, yeah. And that it's true, especially in 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 Texas here. The Democrat is running on a I won't cut one dollar. Again, this is Paul Sadler. I'll rail on Ted Cruz in a minute. <laughs> but the Democrat is running on it. I won't cut one dollar from defense, and I would never vote to legalize marijuana, even for medical use. That's the Democrat. And that's that. Well, they they have they feel like they have to be like less Democrats or whatever that is. You because know, they're in yeah. Texas. Because they're just like well, they what I guess what they're going for is Ted Cruz is is not. You know, he's psycho conservative, and I am just, you know, they're going for Ted, you know, Paul Sadler saying, well, I'm just moderately conservative, and it's just like. Well, you're just representing you don't have the Americans. Yeah, I, I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, you know, it, I would, I would think that the Democrats should just go full on. They never, you know, the guy raises like we've raised about one tenth the money that the Democrat has, but he's got the D next to his name. If you know, if if we had the party infrastructure that that guy had we would have probably enthused his base. I gave the same speech that I give every time that I give a speech in front of libertarians that goes over just like gangbusters. I gave the same speech at a Green Party rally and had the exact same 
enthusiastic response with about half the crowd getting up and getting uh, yard signs and bumper stickers and everything else saying, oh, you got my vote and, and spreading the word. Well, believe you, you don't have to tell me because I've been interviewing people that are Libertarian, Green Party, independent candidates. I've talked to a couple of people that are fusion candidates. Um, uh, one place in Delaware, um, there's a person that's endorsed by the... Um, uh, he's a Green Party candidate, Andrew Groff. He's endorsed by the Libertarian Party there. There's a couple other states um, they are doing the same thing. The governor of uh, Montana who's running, um, he's a Libertarian candidate. He's helped other Green Party people get on the ballots. Um, and, and even on his website, he's, an endorse, he's endorsing one of the Green Party candidates there. I mean, there are a couple of fundamental issues um, like uh, war and peace, the, the war on drugs, which is a war on us. Um, our civil liberties is, um, you, you know, expanding police states. Uh, and, uh, I mean, so what are some of the issues where, you, you, you know, they're, they're, tr they're running on well, a campaign of not even trying to be as part of their normal platforms? I mean, so what, what is your platform, and, and why are you the better choice, whether, you know, if I was a Green Party person, if I was a Libertarian, if I was an Independent, if even if I was a disgruntled Republican or Democrat, possibly? <laughs> Well, I mean, in, in Texas, there's actually a Green uh, Party candidate on the ballot, but he's he's basically, I mean, he, he's run zero campaign. He's tried absolutely nothing. Now, see, sometimes I, I say, well, you know, I don't care if he's in the debates or not, but the at the same time, he's not, it was just like they put him on the ballot so there'd be somebody on the ballot. But as opposed to, like, why, uh, I mean, he seemed like a nice enough guy. I've never really met him, but, but the... Um, but the three issues that we go, I go out and talk about all the time, that, like, I own a bar. I actually have two businesses, small businesses. I have 34 employees. And I will talk to anybody. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what color they are. It doesn't matter where they're from. It doesn't matter. I'll tell them my three issues, and they'll go, yeah, I'm totally down with that. You got my vote. And it's the same with the Green Party. When I go to those Green Party things or when I go to Libertarian things, it doesn't matter. All I say is I have three major issues. It's really these are the, honestly the three issues that got me involved in politics. These are this is the stuff that I that I care about, and it's ending the wars, ending corporatism, and living your life as you see fit. So those are the three things. It's basically not you know I mean a real true end to our pol our military. I mean, what if around all the that world you could accomplish world, with a coalition was, and, and through campaigning and championing it was a war? I mean, what if that was the only thing that we changed our uh, foreign policy, our, our military policy? I mean, if that's the only thing that we could change, what would the future look like with just that change? And how would that, like, um, affect other areas in our uh, government? <laughs> well, I mean, for one... You know, I fear right now. I've been asked before, like, what do you? What's your fear? The Dallas Morning News asked me, what's your fear for for uh, ten years down the road in foreign policy? And um, if you know, it was the 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 question was, what do you ten years down the road in foreign policy? And my answer was, well, if we keep going like we're going, going giant, you know, two billion dollar boats, and, you know, tanks and and everything else aren't going to be any good because all we're going to have is an entire world full of people that are that are putting on you know bombs in their underwear and blowing up theaters you know we're going to have to have a police state where if you go to your mom uh, if you know your mom comes to your soccer game she's going to get patted down outside to make sure she doesn't have any type of weapons or bombs on her because that's the world we're creating right now is this checkpoints yeah, the incarceration world. rate for the U.S. is the highest than any other country. Even the countries we're claiming that aren't democratic, like Iran, China, Russia. Um, and, uh, I mean, we have a higher incarceration rate than any of those countries. We're setting well, up drones. The TSA is expanding past the airports into... And that's that's domestically. But I'm, I'm telling you, what we're doing with our foreign policy is going to be to the point where there's going to be such inspired hatred across the world that we're going to end up with you know, anybody and their brother. These people aren't coming over here in trying to attack us because we're free. You know, and that's the problem that a lot of people don't understand. They, they're coming over here and attacking us because what we do over there. They're yeah. coming over here and attacking us because what we do around the world. They're coming and, over and, and attack us because our government is run by corporate greed. And it's not right. a matter of 
it's, it's not being anti-capitalist to say that there are corporations that use their money to buy government influence to get what they want. And then when they get what they want, you always wonder, why did we do that? Well, it's easy to see if you follow the money. Yeah, I mean, and that's the way the our money, government. I mean, do you think we would even be in half of these uh, overseas conflicts if if there wasn't any oil in, in, in near them? Like, would we even be in the interest in Middle East? Probably. I mean, we, do, if if there wasn't, if, you know, if they didn't have any oil. Yeah. Well, just a minute. I mean, if you know, if you had a product that no one ever used, called it, let's call it a winket. I don't know. I'm just, I'm making it. This would be the first time I've ever. Uh, this just came to my head as we were talking, so it's not memorized. <laughs> but if you had a thing called a wanket, and you were you were a lobbyist, and you went to the government and said you need a wanket, and the government said, "Oh, we don't really need wankets." And then you, the, you said to the government, "Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a million dollars for every two billion dollars worth of wankets you buy." Uh, next thing you know, we're finding uses for wankets. Yeah, if we can't even stand up to special interests then how can we expect to stand up to uh, terrorists and, and other nations that might be aggressive? You know, first we've got to even, we've got to stand up to the special interests. Then, you, you know, we'll be able to protect ourselves even a, a lot better, you know. And uh, it's supposed right. to be a civilian-run military. And uh, so, I mean, if we need to do, uh, you, you know, war, we, we, you know, we can do it better than anyone. But, um, but we're supposed to do it, get it over with, and, and then get home. But um, hopefully... You know, people won't even want to mess with us because, um, you, you know, number one, we're just. We can w win the moral argument. Number two, we would, uh, you, you know, pretty much obliterate them uh, to the high heavens. But um, yeah. So I, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, and plus, I mean, the the spending. I mean, how far back do you think the budget could go to like 2006 spending levels or so? I mean, that, I think just doing that would cut it to like uh, an enormous amount. Sure, I, it sure wouldn't be. It sure wouldn't be a problem for me. I think we could. Uh, uh, I'm, you know, I'm with Gary Johnson on that. If we can go, if we can cut 1.4, so what's that bring us to? It's about 2.2 trillion a year, and then all of a sudden, that's well, what you call 2.2 trillion dollars is spending the amount of money that you have coming in. <laughs> so, you know, and most people that have to balance a checkbook understand the idea that you don't spend more money than you got coming in. Yeah, wouldn't it be great to get that to the my next wife. generation? Like, um, okay, you can now. It's time for you all to get into the uh, Congress and, and everything, and and uh, the America is debt free. So you, you know, now now we can leave you a, uh, uh, you, you know, a, a situation where you're not in debt, and then they can hopefully. Um, you know, not get themselves in a debt, I guess. Um, what about the, now the civil liberties? I mean, do you think that can affect to the economy, like whether people feel free um, or whether they feel like they're in a police state? A lot of people don't even feel like flying nowadays. I mean, um, and, and then, you, you know, there's just a legal w warrants. Uh, people, you know, these FBI agents can write them themselves without getting a judge's warrants um, because it's the judge who's supposed to um, sign those off. And, uh, you know, it's people getting their houses raided, um, with people being in jail for the same things that our presidents admitted that they've done themselves, smoking uh, marijuana. I mean, now, you might disagree with doing it or not, but do you think someone who smoked a joint should spend um, hard time in prison? I mean, if that's all they ever did. Was that the, was that the question? Yeah, that's a couple questions rolled into one, I guess. But, but, but pretty much civil liberties. 60. Let me see if I can... Uh, I mean, the main thing is Start off with, do you believe that civil liberties would help the economy? That's it. Uh, that's the bottom line. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, well, uh, protecting civil liberties would help the economy because you would have people probably would feel more free. But more than that, you already mentioned that we have the highest incarceration rate, and we do. So the bottom line there is that uh, is that we, we, you know, how much does that cost? It costs about $45,000 a year to keep somebody in jail. And that's a bare minimum. I mean, that's like a lot of people tell me I lowball that number. And, you know, I looked it up and then looked it up again and looked it up again and finally said, well, about 45000 You know, lot. there are people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, $45,000 a year. And you think about it, what does it take to keep a man in an apartment eating food, eating Cheetos on his thing, watching cable TV? You know, it costs about Twenty, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's what he went out and made. So for some reason, it cost us forty-five thousand dollars. The entire cost of you know the 
you know, two people, what two people are living on nowadays. But we didn't have a bunch of barn pot and pertinent, you know, mumble news people, like, running the government. Yeah, maybe, we, you know, we th that would probably just even be a better thing. Just buy a whole neighborhood and just put them in there and put them on, you know, and just keep, you put a big gate around it or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anyway, well, and, and the bottom line is, is though there's too many people incarcerated for all the wrong reasons, and we've got, you know, some people say, oh, it's just how how proficient our uh, our police officers are. And it's like, well, no, I don't think it's sad. I think maybe it's a little bit different, because uh, I think over 50% of people uh, in prisons are in there for not just uh, non-violent, but what's considered victimless. Sometimes yeah. I get in debates with people where they, they use the term that we got to free non-violent criminals, and it's like, no, we don't. Because a non-violent criminal is like Bernie Madoff, and I would argue that Bernie Madoff is... His actions is probably led to a lot of deaths, you know. Uh, yeah, a lot, a, a lot of deaths or a lot of, you know, misery. a lot of heartache and misery and everything else, and he knew absolutely what he was doing. And one guy running into a gas station with a gun who, who stole, you know, $150 uh, would still, you know, would be locked up, whereas we'd let Bertie Madoff walk out the door. And, yeah, you know, well, white-collar crime isn't, like, necessarily cleaner than, a, you know, blue-collar crime, per se. Yeah. So. It's, they should really look at the damage that's done. They do that because they know that most of them, the reason laws are made like that is because they know that most of them stand a good chance of going to jail tonight. <laughs> So they want to make sure but you're saying that victimless <laughs> crimes. I mean, it's kind of like those unenforceable crimes too, like prostitution, drugs. I mean, I am definitely against that. But it, well, that's called a victimless crime. Yeah. If you, and honestly, if you uh, something you agree to engage in, and something else agrees to engage in, and then from there on, as far as I'm concerned, that's a victimless crime. And you can say, well, some people they might get a disease from prostitution. They sure might. Yeah, it, and some I mean, people might 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 smoke so much pot they fall asleep one night and eat too much Cheetos and get fat. They sure might. And you know what, what should mean? be the punishment for it? I mean, if people aren't willing, I mean, I, 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 like if if you had a relative and 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 they were like a close relative, a friend, a cousin, brother, whatever, because about everyone knows someone who smoked pot because um, according to surveys, fifty percent of people admit to trying it. So that's fifty percent, one out of two of us. I mean, you walk into a building, there's two hundred people there, one hundred of them has smoked um, uh, marijuana, and uh, so Lock are them you gonna, all up. Are, yeah, are you going to say, like, are you ready to put all Firing those people squad. into for prison? Um, if you're not ready to put them into prison, then what's got to be the only other rational, reasonable choice is just to let it go. And um, so it's and, – and, and, if, and if you come to that same conclusion I have – then, then this whole debate's over. Let's just get it done with, and and um, you, you know, either lock half the country up or just um, uh, not in, enforce it anymore and, and make it legal. Maybe tax it, and maybe less people will use it. There'll be less of the mystique. I mean, um, well, and 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 maybe the same amount of people will use it. Maybe. maybe a few more people will use it, and maybe it's none of my business. Right. And you know, and and because for some point, reason someone decided. To you know, for some reason, someone decided to make it my business, and I and I didn't. <laughs> but somehow, whenever I, I at the end of every month, I start writing twelve thousand dollars worth of tax bills that go to the government. I start saying, I guess they made some of this stuff my business because that's what I'm paying for. You know. Well, you could argue, like I mean, that um, you, you know, some musicians have used it and and have written great songs so i mean you, you know um. <laughs> but yeah well there's people honestly i'll tell you the truth there's the truth about marijuana that people don't know is that it it is a wonder drug and whatever i mean i'm well, I, I know hemp is for sure i mean that industrial hemp, uh, that doesn't i know a girl mean. that uh, well we i went to a and this has really changed my whole view and i used to have this funny story that i would tell and uh it just changed my whole view on it i don't smoke pot and but I went, not that I haven't in my life, but I was 26 years old the last time, so it's been about 18 years, something like that. So anyway, um, well, there are six, people on cancer and stuff that have. Oh, you don't know. Miraculous. You don't even know the half of it. This this guy brought pictures and a video in of him with his daughter. He was wheeling his daughter. He came and gave a speech, and he was wheel. He had the video of himself wheeling his daughter around. She had a tube in her mouth, and she couldn't move, and her arms were flayed out. I mean, you've seen people like that in those wheelchairs, and she couldn't 
uh, really do anything, and they said they couldn't communicate with her, but they knew she was there. Her eyes would kind of give a little glimmer that she knew what they were saying when they would say it. And they were just, they were desperate. So they went to their, their, their local doctor, and the local doctor said, by law, he is not allowed to tell them that they should go try cannabis treatment. And they were like, oh, by law, you're not allowed to tell us that? He's like, I am not allowed to say, you should go try a cannabis treatment. I'm not allowed to say that by law. You know what I mean? And right, kept right. saying exactly. that over and over again. Right, right. Well, while <laughs> and he they, was like saying in his mind, you should go see a cannabis treatment. Yeah. <laughs> and so they did. And after the father spoke at this event we were at, the daughter got up and gave a great speech. Just as the same, talking the same way I'm talking to you right now, standing on both legs, giving a speech. Uh, and she said that it completely changed her life. And I've heard that from so many people about so many things that I've I've gone to the point where I say, okay, you know, the chances are that this, the reason that, I mean, you look in your, your most people's medicine cabinet and you see pills after pills after pills after pills after pills, and most of those could actually be replaced by this to most people. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, to a lot to of, a lot of I mean, injured. some people can eat it, some people can... Um, you, you know, do other things to, to ingest it. Uh, it doesn't have to be with smokes. Um, right. People can vaporize however you want to. However you want to do it. I really don't even, I, it's not even my business. But my thing is, is that I, I feel like it's it's something that grows out of the ground. You're not going to stop it. When people say, well, well, children, if you grew it in your backyard, children could get it. Yep. They can also huff gas if you leave it in your car. So you better not leave gas in your car. So what should, everybody should do is when they come home, they pull all the gas out of their car, dry around the edges and then carry that in the backpack around with them so that their kids don't accidentally huff the gas that's in their car. So we live we in a live... country where that is illegal, though. I, I mean, and, and, and believe it or not, I mean, I think our uh, founding fathers would be rolling in their graves because they actually grew the um, hemp and, and stuff. And um, Abraham Lincoln said he loved to sit by and then smoke a pipe or whatever. And um, But uh, so... It, I, I, I mean, now the reason why these are illegal is because of big special interests and also just because of habit. I mean, maybe the big special interests for, you know, well, they probably still want it illegal. But th th here's the thing. Um, we've got to find a way because it's only a couple of special interests. You think about, um, uh, it's, you know, what special interests might want this um, to stay illegal. Pharmaceutical industry and the, uh, and the prison systems, private prisons. Like, yeah, both like, of those, and the like same thing with the wars. Uh, now, and a lot of people claim that that a lot of this is about control, where the government just kind of wants to control you and 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 tell you how to how to be. And and some people say that they have an interest in a police state where they can check out your car, check out your goods, see what you're doing, you know, things like that. But and a lot of it, but a lot of it has to do with profit. I mean, oh, yeah. if people could manufacture, if people could make pot, or people could grow pot and sell it and, and just say, well, here's your pot, and da -da, you know, you should try this for your headache. Yeah, <laughs> try this for your glaucoma. Try this for your, you know, whatever's ailing you, you know. Well, and Well, whatever their intentions are, you know, whether they're just, you know, clay brain people or um, actually uh, miscreants, um, they, they've, uh, you know, they have their motivations. But on the flip side of that, if there are certain businesses that have these interests, granted that they're very, very strong because they get a lot of kickbacks from governments um, and it's just a revolving door of their employees entering into the government and then getting sweet jobs afterwards after they write legislation, at the same time, there must be, you know, I would say 90 plus percent of other businesses shouldn't be on the same boat and they should join us. I mean, we shouldn't be, we're not the minority here. And um, then there's plenty of businesses. I don't think AT&T would have any interest in this. I don't think Sprint would, you, you know, I don't think Apple would. I don't think there's lots of companies that wouldn't have any, they would profit by us profiting and our, the, their consumer base. And I think we need to re really build a coalition with them. Um, Businesses, I mean, with people, definitely Green Party, Libertarians, but I think we should also 
you know make the debate and point out the argument to um, to a lot of these businesses, which you, you know have a lot of influence as well. That um, it's in their best interest to be on on the side of uh, we the people. I mean, do you, what do you think about those thoughts there? Because a lot of people try to make the point that we're against business, but a lot of the, the businesses should be um, on our side. It's just a couple of businesses that are really profiting big time off of a. Uh, you, you, you know their special interest status. Well, you, that's why. I mean, in the end, the only thing you can try to do is limit what government can do to you. I mean, it's because the more if you try to break government up to give them the ability to do something for you, you will find AT and T and yeah, you'll and, uh, they, and they have also. They did have to break them up, right? You know, well, AT and T or or you know, Apple or whatever, trying to force you to buy something, or as well as, you you know, the problem is, is that there's no profit in it for them to take the side of the marijuana user. But now we, there, there probably is, because in the long, we just need to find those arguments, because, um, I mean, in the long run, uh, it, it should be, if the people prosper, we all should lift up, you know? Yeah, well, I mean... I don't see, I don't see them doing that. I mean, I mean, you know, just I'm, like voting I'm, I'm just, is, I'm just, I'm trying to, I mean, I'm trying to think of the way that it happens, like as a small business owner or whatever. It's just like, I mean, I have normal events well, at if, if half my the bar, people are, and I guess that yeah. helps, that helps business. If we there aren't as many people there and they, incarcerated, then that's more customers they might have, a, a more. Oh, sure, you know, and I was going to say when you were saying that, that live people buy more products. Yeah. And, and talking about people who have died from not having it or, or whatever, but uh, I just don't know whether they're going to see, a, for instance, uh, at the same time when you have the normal events, you've got people that say, oh, I can't believe you had that there at your place, we're not going to go over there. It's the same, you know, it's like the Chick-fil-A thing, which really worked out for chick uh, Right, right. chick fil Exactly. So, uh, Chick-fil-A. I don't even know how you say chick. I don't. I don't ever. I always say chick fil A. I've said that since I was in fourth grade or something. <laughs> anyway, Chick Fil A. Uh, but uh, but you know you're. I, look, I'm just coming at it from. A lot of times we talk and we say, oh, they're doing it. but it's like I I like as a businessman to say, well, what is it? What's the uh, what's the proposal? <laughs> you know what I mean, and and then you know how does it work? And like I said, I saw benefit from having the normal guys. They come in now once a month, and I enjoy having those guys there, and 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 you know their meetups there and stuff like that, and and uh, and usually I'll get up and speak for a little bit too, and it's it's kind of a cool thing, but but the uh, but I don't necessarily see. I just don't know if I see that where the the big businesses are going to see the profit in it, but maybe we can come up with something. I mean, if I sat around and thought about it all day, I guess this is the first time I've ever even thought about that. Well, we're all on the same, I mean, in the long run, I mean, it's, it's, if we keep going the way we're going, I, I mean, you know, you could have half the people in private prisons and, and the other half, uh, you, you know, as the guards and, um, and then we'll be, uh, you know, the working base for like countries like China, where we're the cheap labor or something like that. So, I mean, so yeah, I don't think AT and T would like that. Or I guess they could just move to China or whatever, you know, and and become a Chinese company. Or, um, <laughs> but but um, it's it's just like kind of the same thing as we say the government. Like it's not us. Like we need a, it. It's that language. We need to claim that control back again. It, it's it's us. We the people. And and. Uh, so it's 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 better for them to be on our side. Uh, that that's that's for sure. Um, and and to you know sometimes people need to stand see other people stand up before they stand up as well. And I think a lot of the people are going to be standing up. I mean, what do you think about the um, what, uh, the forecast for 2012, November 6? Um, I mean, it, 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 like people in strategize political strategizing rooms, um, uh, strategery as uh, someone once said um, is. Uh, for like libertarian, Green Party, uh, third party, independence. I mean, it's it's got to be the most opportunistic year as a business decision. Like you were saying, I mean, if I was a, thinking in my business mind, this has got to be the most opportunistic year for independent third party candidates that we've had so far, at least. I mean, there might be 
more opportunistic ones in the future, hopefully not. I, I mean, I say that, say, you know, saying that the, this environment which causes this opportunism is because of the 10% um, low congressional approval rating and, and people mostly identifying themselves as independents. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's it's also because you really have got a Republican candidate that no one's enthused about with a Democratic candidate that no one's really that enthused about, and I think that's gonna that's gonna cause people to go, wait a minute. I also like the LP strategy of uh, you know a lot lately promoting you know basically attacking Mitt Romney from the right attacking Paul Ryan from the right and attacking uh, Barack Obama from the left. I think it's funny. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and they should be on the same ticket. I they had a, they called, called them the twins before, um, Obamni. And, um, yeah, that, that's uh, just have them on the same tickets. Um, we really need to open up those debates. So what can we do to help you? Um, like, who sh should people in Texas, and even if you're not in Texas, I mean, um, look at the following Ron Paul has gotten, and a lot of those people weren't even from that 14th district. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of the same thing. Like, I see you and other Liberty, Liberty candidates in my best interest. I mean, just the fact that, uh, you know, it's going to be a freer um, world. Um, and uh, to, to me, that's, you, you, you know, payback enough uh, and to get the message out there. Um, what? Uh, so if you're not... That would be the easiest way to help. Because you're going to find information about I mean, be, like our, should people our call, Facebook page, etc. You're going to, yeah. but I, I'm just saying it, it'd be overcomplicated for me to do that. But if they just go to j o h n j a y m y e r s dot com, so John J Myers dot com, and there's only one e. Uh, right. J o h n j a y m y e r s dot com. That would be, you're going to find in our Facebook, our Facebook launches to an event page, and the event page has the uh, the uh, protest we're doing outside of the studio that's not having us in the debate. So if someone wanted to get involved okay. in that, they could. If they wanted to donate, they could. If they wanted to volunteer to make calls or whatever, they could do all that. So I guess it is up to the studios and the network stations to do that, because they could say themselves, like, we're not even going to conduct the debates. And yeah, I mean, unless if we, you know, so I, I guess it's more up to the studios and the, the news channels. Um, well, once they decide to or not to, that's, that's kind of the issue, because there's a lot of government freebies that, that all TV channels get. So if you're a TV, you know, so I mean, it's, it's a weird thing. I'm not a big government guy, but at the same time, if you're going to use my tax dollars to fund your TV station, which is what they do with the with the FEC, with the airwaves that they have, with everything else, if, right. you're, if you're sponging off of our dime or if you've collected a monopoly on those airwaves, which you have, and then you decide to have a political debate, <laughs> you better have it be fair. And, and I, you know, like I said, I don't even know. It's weird because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm running, but I don't know whether I consider that the Green Party guy should be on that debate. Well, I think the reason is, is the difference yeah. is, is because he's not running a campaign at all. I mean, he's put zero. I don't think in he it. has he's, a website raised, that that's like. Raised, yeah, he doesn't zero even, dollars. He's raised. Doesn't have a campaign team. Da 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 da. da. I mean, you're just like, yeah. it's all. All my criteria is is it's two criteria: are you on the ballot, and are you actually trying? <laughs> Did he at least have a website? I mean, um, and uh, I, I'm not. I don't think he, he does. I mean, I've been mostly trying to interview with, uh, like, I'll just to back you up on that. I've been mostly trying to interview districts um, for Congress or Senate campaigns where it's just like a Libertarian or just a Green Party candidate. So that way, I can just focus on areas where there's just one or the other. And and when I looked up Texas, I was like, all right, well, there's a Green Party candidate on this. So I try to look up his stuff and I couldn't find anything so I'm like all right well this guy's not even running so I might as well just contact John Jay you know I mean this guy he didn't have nothing up there at all so um, so yeah you're absolutely right about that I mean it's it's you're you're trying you're campaigning out there I didn't have that so there's a lot of people like that but still I mean in a year like this, uh, there's a lot of districts across the country, too, where there's, um, I mean, if you go to LP, Libertarian Party, LP.org, you can find the full list, GP for Green Party, um, F, the FEC website, 
has links to all the, um, the departments of uh, the uh, elections and Secretary of State. So there's hundreds of um, possible candidates uh, that um, you, you know we can choose this year. And uh, what a message that would send to um, to the powers that be, the Republicans, the Democrats, and all the people that they work for. That um, you know, there's a new special interest in town, I, I guess, and, and that's the Constitution, we the people. I mean, we're fully interactive, we're operational, we're ready to get this going. And if there were 50-plus representing one from each state, um, like I kind of think of this as a campaign, kind of like the Republicans in the 90s um, had that uh, contract with America. Well, I'm saying <clears throat> let's get 50-plus people to the Congress, and, uh, and, and it's just – you know, good results can can definitely um, uh, come to fruit after that. So, I mean, maybe two. Yeah, years. we can also hope that even if, if some of these candidates start getting ten to fifteen percent, you could also hope that either a people's minds change about their electability, or b uh, that the other two parties are so worried that these candidates are shifting off ten to fifteen percent of their vote that they actually do try to change their ways. And Absolutely. if in the end, if a uh, if a if if what I've done causes the Republicans to be, you know, less less warlike or less uh, socially intolerant, that's a win. If it causes the Democrats to be less, you know, more of a spendthrift, <laughs> you know, if it causes the Democrats to actually think that maybe we can't just spend money we don't have uh, and stop taking other people's money and giving it to other people, then... Uh, then maybe we've accomplished something, you well, know? Absolutely. I mean, that that's a real true uh, point. And um, so if you do good this year, you'll spread the message, you'll put heat on the politicians, It's um, and, and then it'll make it even e easier for uh, two years down the line. Um, and, and, and after all, it's just kind of like what you were saying, John Jay, about, um, you know, one of your um, opponents is, I mean, the Democrats, they're the ones who violate the civil liberties. They're the ones who are enforcing, you, you know, the drug laws hard, harder against the states that, that want to um, regulate it. They're the ones who, um, you, you know, do the opposite of what they campaign on. It's Republicans. They're the ones who start up and, and get us in all this debt and and, and expand the prescription uh, Medicare thing without being able to negotiate any prices. And, 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 and so they, they always give us the opposite of uh, what they campaign on. And um, I mean, isn't really, I mean, aren't you the more, I mean, even Ron Paul's budget, where he was going to cut out a lot, um, I, I mean, he, you know, he had his priorities straight. I mean, he wasn't going after Social Security and, and Medicare as the first things, even right. though that's, that was, you know, something that... That's he was, what I say, too. It's just something that's like, if you can possibly, we've got to start one. It's a Ponzi scheme, too. It can't last. So something's got to be done about it. But that doesn't mean we just go, the end you know, throw mom under the train or whatever. It's not like that. It's just more of a, okay, this hasn't worked. We've got to come up with a way that does work. Because, you know, you find this weird thing. It's like a lot of people are like, well, I paid into it. I want my money. Well, it's really not your money <laughs> because it's my money. And then, you know, I, I am that weird person that is supposedly will retire on the day, you know, not the day, but I was the year that Social Security stops paying. So I will have, I started working when I was 10 years old, I will have paid into Social Security from the time I was 10 years old until the time I retired, and I am that person. Actually, Rand Paul introduced something where they just raise it like one year, like like they raise it like a, a day or something for over the, like the next 10 or 20 years, and it only raises it like one or two years over like the next 20 years, and it pretty much keeps it solvent for, you, you know, the next as far as I can see, I mean, I mean, just something simple as that introduced with some means testing. I mean, uh, well, they're talking about means testing plus an, an age. It's still, you know, honestly, it's a Ponzi scheme. Honestly, to me, it's unconstitutional. Uh, originally, when when they they instituted Social Security and when they really went against the con when it went to the Supreme Court, uh, the Social Security went against. The went up to the Supreme Court, and it was initially a, you pay in, whatever you pay in, you get out with this interest. Okay, so it's like, we're going to save your money for you, which, you know, is what it is, you know, but at least it's not a Ponzi scheme where other people pay your money. So about four years after Social Security started is when it, it switched from being a, we're going to save your money for you to 
screw it, there's all this money here, we'll spend this money, you guys can put some more money in, when those people get older, there'll be some money for you. So it was just a giant money grab, a way to get money for the politicians to have another pot to pull money out of. Yeah. And so, you know, that's what Social Security is, and, and when it was found constitutional, it was found constitutional because it was a savings account, not a Ponzi scheme. I see. And then it became a Ponzi scheme. They never ran it back up the flagpole to see what the uh, Yeah, maybe they should say put it back it. as a savings account. Actually, Ron Paul introduced um, some legislation in the late 90s um, that, that he was actually going to do that. It was actually really good legislation. Um, I, I looked it over. It was, um, ter you know, peop it was putting it into CDs so it actually, the trust fund would collect some interest on it as well. And, um, and, and CDs are the, the kind that he was going to put them in. But it, it's totally... Uh, fail-proof fail and um, I mean it was a very sensible thing and, and this is from someone who's a libertarian it's 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 ironic that um, he probably is the one who would have saved it while it's Obama and Romney are, are the ones that are probably going to disappoint a lot of people just like Obama has for you, you know his uh, a trail of broken promises I mean there's just yeah. um, I mean he's you know, there's so many of them and and I don't think I don't you know, but that's a presidential election, anyways. I mean, we're talking about the uh, the House and the Senate, and uh, it w it's, so it'd be so exciting if you were there, and um, you, you know, the, and if you had like maybe a wave of like, you, you know, 50 peers and probably more in the House, but maybe a couple in the Senate this year as well would be great. Um, well, John Jay, it's uh, definitely a pleasure here. Let's just in the final couple questions here. What is some of your um, favorite? Um, historical figures um, that you might have been thinking about as of late. Uh, they, they might not even be people that you like, but just some, some people that you're, that you, you know, that, that's been on your mind and, and why. Oh, wow. What is, uh, well, that's interesting. That's an interesting question. I don't know. Uh, man, lately I, I think about, like, what I, what I read about. Or give and, you current uh, figures as well, too. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, I, I'm always, you know, I'm always a big fan of Hazlitt. I'm always a big fan of uh, Mises. I'm always a big fan of Ron Paul. And uh, you know, the, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> you know, in my spare time, which I don't have much of, considering I run two businesses and I'm running for Senate, I don't have a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of things like I like. I don't like to spend a lot of time reading or things that I don't that I don't interest me a great deal, things where I can't learn. So it's everything I read is boring. I mean, I don't know if you're looking for me yeah, to well, say, Abraham you know, Lincoln of, said there's, I mean, or the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, and Abraham Lincoln said, I mean, the, after reading these books, or I'm paraphrasing here, that um, everything I read is something that's been um, written sometime before. You, you know, these are just ideas being rediscovered. Although we oh, do yeah. build off the past. No, no, no. So, yeah, and I'm not. No, I mean, yeah. boring is in it would make this conversation boring. <laughs> I mean, okay. I enjoy them. I'm just a boring person. Oh, okay. you know what I mean. I, see, I, mean, I, I, I like, I like, I don't mind. I don't mind some of the stuff that people go. Oh well, I wouldn't like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. No, I know what you so, mean now. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm not saying that. I know. I by no means am I saying that I know everything or or anything like that. What all I'm saying is that uh, that everything I like to read is boring to most people to hear about. Right. It's not going to, you know, be on MTV or something like yeah. that. Yeah, or my, my superstars are real old. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I mean? yeah. That's cool. <laughs> no, that, that's that's great. That's great. And uh, now, uh, what about, um, the, you know, the pro-life, pro-choice debate? Where do you, um, you know, what, what do you think is the, um, you, you know, the, 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 the go should be the governing policy on that? Uh, well, I think it should be the... I was going to make some sort of joke, but there's really nowhere to go with that. The, the bottom line is this. The, I, you know, there's people, <laughs> I would probably be considered by the people on the, I'd be, by people on the right, I would be considered pro-choice. By people on the left, I'd be considered pro-life. It's funny that there's, no one's come up with that middle ground. Let me tell you what the middle ground is. I can't imagine a world where our government goes around to find out whether a lady, you know, who had a miscarriage was guilty of murder or not. You know what I mean? I can't imagine a world where we go around and, and you know, there's some sort of police state that would be required to It's another one of those manage, unenforceable laws, yeah. To manage this type of thing, and, and, I, and I, don't, I don't see it 
voting well, and I don't like the idea of that kind of a police state. On the other hand, so that's why the right would say I'm pro-choice. On, but on the other hand, I would never vote for a piece of legislation, regardless of what it was, if it paid for abortions at any time. Right, right, with federal during, dollars, yes. Yeah. During the process. If there was a one penny was going to go to an abortion, then I'd have to say no. I, because I, I, I wouldn't even ahead. pay for stitches, let alone an abortion. You know, so that's the bottom line. That, and that, then, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, I think, because, I mean, that's principled sense. Because the reason why I think a lot of pro-choice people don't get why pro-life people don't want any funding going towards it, because <laughs> they don't want their have to wash their hands from what they consider something that is um, y you know that that would bring a nation directly to hell by killing its kids and stuff like that now, at the same time I mean if, if someone was like raped and had had to have a baby I don't think someone should be forced to have a baby and, and that that's just my personal opinion though I, I sure y y well you know. I mean and that's I mean and and that's that gets into the whole thing but I I, I think yeah. that beyond that you know, it's, so that's, yeah. it's, I just can't imagine how that would happen. So if you're not going to create this police force apparatus, this abortion police or whatever, then, then we really are at, 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 at like what you're saying. It's the same thing with, with the drugs and the same thing with the prostitution. Um, it, it's, um, they're not the same things, but it's the same principle of um, are, are you ready to really, you, you know, build up a whole other department to enforce this kind of thing? And I guess yeah. that's... Yeah, You're going to have a whole nation of young girls uh, that take weird trips to Mexico right. for some unknown reason. Right, right. So we've talked about, you know, a couple of issues. I mean, the foreign policy, the drug policy, uh, uh, this, and, um, and uh, I mean, basically the economy as, as well. Um, is there any issues that I haven't brought up yet, uh, John Jay, that, that you would like to um, – cover that you'd like to explain to the electric out there, whether they be Republicans, Democrats, Green Party, Independents, um, Libertarians, etc. Oh, I, you know, I think we've about covered it. My daughter Dagny has just uh, laid on top of my lap, so I think oh. this is the end. <laughs> great. Well, great talking with you today, and good luck in that campaign. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on the debates. I mean, I would love to watch that. And uh, you know, it seems like any time there's like a, you know someone who's principled in those debates, that's re you know not a Republican or Democrat, they seem to clean the floor pretty. I, I mean, you know, the clean house and uh, do really well. So um, I look forward to that because they, they're not bound by these, you know, silly things that the parties uh, bound them to. And, uh, John, it's been a pleasure. I'll say goodbye to you real quickly to uh, after this interview. And, and thanks very much, sir. Have All a right, great thank weekend. you. Thanks. All right.